What's going on everyone? Who we have coming on, today we got Josh Ostrowski. So he's also known via his Instagram handle as the fat Jew, fat Jewish, etc. And so he has over 10 million followers on Instagram. He's a writer, an actor, a plus size model, a winemaker, entrepreneur, and comedian. He has a super, super unorthodox approach, which I'm excited to talk to him about, but it's led him to capturing the attention of millions and millions around the world. So he's the creator of Babe Rosé. If you've ever had that can, Babe Rosé, so good. And he has been in so many different movies like Uncut Gems, Zoolander 2. And uh, I think one of the most impressive things I read about Josh is that in 2015, he was named to one of the top 30 influential people on the internet by Times Magazine. Let's get him on. Josh, what's going on, man? Let's dive right into it. And so purpose of today, Real Talk, is we bring prominent individuals who achieved a ton of success. I'm less worried about where you are today and what success looks like. I'm more worried about how you got there. Failures endured and any insight that you could take and provide people following that they can apply to their lives, then this is a win. So the first one I want to talk about is, you know, we'll get to your success, but right now I want to talk about some of your failures. And so my understanding is that in college, you were uh, expelled from Skidmore and then you dropped out of NYU. And I think there's just a lot of people that are looking to start, let's say, new tracks or detours, but they have a past that still stays with them. Or they start college in the first couple of years just isn't going well. So what advice do you have for those people? What did you learn from being expelled and then dropping out and then finding your final home at SUNY Albany? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, like, it, like I, the way I had kind of like set up my whole persona was that kind of like bad news was good news. Like the more crazy shit I do, the more like it would grow sort of the myth of like me being like kind of like down for whatever. Yeah. Getting kicked out of college for me, I think we, I think the final straw was like put, we put like baked potatoes in a tennis ball machine and like shot them. I mean, we were getting all kinds of public nudity and just all kinds of wacky college shit. But for me, getting kicked out was, was it was not a bad thing. It actually was a part of my myth and a part of my story, which it, ne it wouldn't necessarily be for everyone, which I totally understand. Yeah. I also like, is college the wave? Like, I don't think, sure. I just don't think that anything that I'm doing today really necessarily crystallized in college. Like, sure. first of all, you should definitely go to college. Like, make a bunch of memories, like get a UTI, like, you know, like get STDs, like do the whole thing, like sleep with people you hate, like reach, like do shit, whatever. You're gonna need to like, you know, you need that. Um, but the question is really like, if you're not gonna go to Harvard, can you not go to a state school? Will college matter in 20 years? I'm not really sure. So I didn't learn anything, um, but I didn't really need to. Uh, for some people, like that might, that might haunt them a little bit. So I wouldn't necessarily suggest shooting potatoes out of a tennis ball machine naked. Um, but I just, for me at least, college, besides the STDs, skip it. <laughs> I want to go back to so some of the stuff you talk about, the crazy shit you've done that has just made you you. You know, how did you kind of stay true to your creative self, your unconventional ways, even though maybe societal pressures or siblings or mother, dad, grandparents, today's world try and keep us on, you know, the road that they envision rather than the one we envision for ourselves? Totally. Both my parents are doctors. And when your parents are doctors, two <laughs> things, you, either, you either get one of two things. You either get a guy in a button down who works at the Pentagon, like <laughs> basically a scientist doctor, whatever the fuck he does, or you get like a giant adult man baby who completely fucking, you know, thinks that like kind of colors outside the lines. You're only gonna get one or two. There's like no middle ground. My parents like really, they fostered both, they fostered both of our kind of paths. But yeah, yeah it's really fucking tempting at a certain point to like, you know, it's really fucking tempting to like jump for security, right? Um, and, and, and I would say, look, follow your dream and like, don't sell out for the security, but also on the, by the same token, like roll the dice, do some shit that people say cannot be fucking done. Yeah. And like, don't listen to anyone. The adults in the room don't know what they're talking about. You know what you're talking about. Believe in your shit, follow your fucking dreams. I'm not even trying to like be mad inspirational, but that is true. But by the same token, you got to know when to fold them. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, but you gotta know you gotta know when to fucking get out and there's nothing wrong with having a regular job. There's just not. Exactly. I mean, 168 hours in a week, there's side hustle, everyone can get on it. You talk about 
rolling the dice though and just taking a shot. So I want to talk about some of the stuff you've done. You are what I would consider, if I could think of like two words to describe you and doing the research, I'd call it like a creative disruptor, right? So you had the protests with Instagram, you had this like life-size chili bowl, you do an ad, you're sitting in the middle of a chili bowl, like brilliant. Then on top of it, you're doing Soul Cycle for homeless people using free bikes in the New York City, the city bikes. So it's just creative and it's disruptive. And I think in the world to do that, you gotta have courage, tenacity, you gotta have like just some chops and some leadership. So from your perspective, like how did you kind of gain that tenacity uh, to just say like, I'm gonna disrupt everything the way people think and just make it my own. And then a lot of people could think about it, but then how do you actually execute that? Right, um, I mean, first of all, like, you really gotta not care what fucking, what people think. Let me tell you something. The, the adults in my life who were like at the time when I was in my late teens or early 20s or whenever I started this whole journey, they yeah. had plenty of advice for me, but they grew up in a completely different world. Yeah. They grew up in a world where none of this is possible. You can't wear an adult diaper and sit in a bowl of chili and get to the level where I've gotten, where I'm the C, I'm basically now, I sold my wine company to Anheuser-Busch. You don't make that jump. Sure. That, that doesn't happen. So you need to like, you need to know, you need to know when to listen and you need to know when to fucking, you need to know when to trust yourself. And ultimately you need to like, you just need to not give a fuck. I forgot about the giant chili bowl. You know, that was a, that was a spot for Craftsman Tools, actually. Craftsman Tools wanted to like get updated and they wanted to do something new and different. And so I gave them this idea, cause you know, they're a dusty brand. They're a heritage American brand, it's for guys. And I said, look guys, you could get a whole millennial audience that like no one knows how to fix anything, right? Like yeah. nobody knows how to do shit. No, millennials don't know how to fucking hammer and nail the right way. No one knows how to change a tire. Like we know how to do tons of shit, but we don't know how to do like anything with tools. So like you guys could grab a whole new audience. Let me sit in a giant bowl of chili. Um, and like it's not a world that any of our parents or anybody over a certain age grew up in where like that would work. So you just gotta say fuck it. And you just gotta, you gotta cannonball all the way in. I named myself the craziest thing that I could name myself, right? I named myself the most non-mainstream palatable like a name that I could. Yes. Yeah. Started a wine brand and then sold it to the largest alcohol company in the world. I, I, I always say I wore, I wore pink assless chaps to meetings with the, with the, with the CEO of, of Anheuser-Busch. You can do what you want. If you have the leverage and you have, the, if you have an audience and the dream, you, there are no rules. Don't let anyone tell you there are. So you talked a lot about like millennials and then your parents and stuff. So let's talk about you for a second. How did you envision or manifest what you now have? We just made it up as we went at least. I just made it up as I went along. Um, I think that the first thing I wanted to do, I used to do a lot of TV writing and a lot of shit. I was trying to go the more traditional lane. Yeah. I think that I realized was that if I built an audience of people who gave a fuck what I had to say and I gave a fuck what they had to say and we were all fucking sharing cool content, then like eventually, like when I got on Instagram and to this day, it was always just to fuck around. It was just to make my friends laugh. It was me in a diaper. It was a fucking meme. It was a video a Polish teenager falling down the stairs, you know, like just classic shit. It was just to make my friends laugh. I wasn't like, I'm going to start a disruptive millennial brand. Like it, wasn't. it was just for fucking me. And yeah. eventually people really fucked with it. The yeah. thing is you don't necessarily, you, you don't, you need a, you need structure, but you don't need to know exactly where you're headed. The idea was build a large audience and fucking give them something awesome. Other than that, there was no plan. I think a big, a big misconception with someone like me is like, you only see the end product on Instagram, right? Like right. you see the final image. It's all it's sort of all distilled down into this final moment of like me pouring cans of rosé onto myself in a kiddie pool. And you're like, fuck, this guy started a rosé company. Like, damn, this fucking big fat adult baby. But what you don't see and what's no different about business now than it was 30 years ago, even though obviously things are fundamentally extremely different, is that yeah. nothing places just good old-fashioned fucking hard work so like if you want to do it you just got to get it leave your nine to five and work fucking more stop yeah. honestly stop fucking hanging out let me tell you i was the king of hanging out the best hangout guy of all time let me tell you you don't get that much out of it you really don't honestly and you know what i see the kids now starting to realize that my intern is 19 and dude is like he's already fucking networking he's taking meetings and shit like that like the kids are so much more business minded now than they were like you just gotta you gotta get the fuck after it if you have to work nine to five do that and when you get home you gotta fucking you gotta work more it's just never gonna fucking it's never gonna stop and like it's not easy like that 
It's not like, oh, I have 11 million Instagram followers, so I just fucking, you know, put up a post and like, boom, rosé sells. Like, I'm gonna go fucking get my butthole bleached. Like, it's a fucking, I got, an, I got a company with 70 people and I deal with as much shit as you do. You just see the final image where it looks fucking sick. So you think that that's all it takes, but the hard work, the internet did not replace the fucking hard work. So we end with something called Restart Rapid Fire. So to get to know you a little bit, I'm gonna ask you a quick couple of questions. Give me your honest answers and we'll wrap up and we really appreciate your time. Okay, so first one, I know you got the manicure truck. So are you a manny guy or a petty guy? I'm a petty guy. I'm a big petty guy. We were actually trying to figure out with the Manny truck, which by the way, the Manny truck is about to be a whole fleet that's being released. You're gonna be able to get a fucking manicure, like fucking anywhere. They're gonna be all over the country. We were trying to figure out how to do petties, but it was too hard to get like, figure out how to like lift your foot into like a truck. It was a whole thing. So people need Manny's. We're doing them all for free. So I want, I at least wanted to get that done, but dude, a petty just like, Getting your foot rubbed is fucking fire. Like, it's just like the absolute, like, if you're not getting, I, dudes are like, yeah, I never got a petty. I'm not, I'm like, you're fucking, what is wrong with you? Honestly. Would you rather socialize with humans or be with your dog, Toast? That's, I'd rather like 100% be with my dog. I have Toast, Toast actually, Toast, uh, Toast died. Toast died and uh, got cremated. And I actually smoked some ashes, which was really not a great idea because I thought it was funny and interesting and then I just really felt sick but I wanted her to be inside of me but I have a corgi now and honestly dogs all day humans are trash we know this like <laughs> simple as simple question what's your corgi's name happy I love it all right so you've met a lot of celebrities in your time what is like who is one celebrity that you kind of were struck starstruck by when you met him you know it's weird actually I'm like the bigger the celeb the more I'm like not that starstruck and then it's like really like low it's like very low level people that I'm fucking that I'm like my mind is blown like yeah. I met Brad Pitt once and I was like yeah dude's hot and like I met Lisa Rinna from the Real Housewives and lost my fucking mind like <laughs> actually was like was actually I was like uh like ah, like freaking out she was like chill relax are you okay yeah, like any like any just like fucking Bravo liberty who's like chugging fucking Pinot Grigio and going off, I will lose my shit. But like, let me tell you something, A-list celebs are fucking boring, except for Madonna, who you mentioned earlier, yeah. who's actual fucking, like the actual wildest human. Like, yeah, because like, you know, when you've been famous for 30, 40 years, you would think you're like an alien from outer space. You turn into like <laughs> Jackson, like you couldn't even talk to the humans. She was incredible. Within within five minutes of meeting her, we were talking about, you know, how she like, we were talking about her giving Dennis Rodman a hand job and all kinds of wild shit. Like it was immediately like, we ended up having a sleepover later, literally at her house. I, not that day, but like we developed this friendship. I slept over, we like ordered food. She let me go through her phone and prank call celebrities. Like I prank called Bono from Madonna. Like she basically was like, so fucking normal, so down to chill. Like having a sleepover and letting me prank call Bono, incredible. Most daily celebrities are boring, but if you're on a Real Housewives cast, I will freak out if I meet you. Or, or Madonna, wow, good to know. All right, so let's. you talked about reality TV. If you had to be on one reality show, what would it be? Honestly, it would be funny to watch me on like Survivor because like I'm Jewish and like Jews can't do anything and like, <laughs> like try to like build a fire or like do anything would be like insane. Wait, so how, if someone has a business idea, though, and they're trying to get it off the ground, like, where do they find your services? Is it just DM, email? What should they do? So, like, there, eventually there will be. Right now, I'm just doing it all fucking grassroots. Like, there's probably something bigger on the way. But for right now, just fucking just hit me up. Just, like, slide in my DMs and be like, yo, I want to start a fucking sunglass company for dogs. And, like, your parents are going to be like, oh, become a dentist. And I'll be like, you know what? One day you might have to become a dentist, but right now you got to follow that sunglass dog dream. You got to follow that shit, and I'm going to help you do it because we didn't know how to do shit when we started. We yeah. had no idea how to fucking incorporate a company or get fucking any of the paperwork or the fucking what is payroll? What are tax? What are taxes? Nobody fucking knows. So like, like I'll help you get through that shit so you can actually get it popping. And if you fail, that's on you. But like, I'm gonna help you fucking. I'm gonna help you like get go in that go in the right direction for sure. So pretty much what we do at Restart is it's it's more on the personal level. It's like we're we're taught all these things in the classroom, but none of it actually applies to like what we need to know in life. So we don't do anything not on the entrepreneur side, but more like just personal finance, knowing the hacks, uh, career navigation, like how to get your raises, how to navigate accordingly, how to go off on your own. So it'd be really cool if we do uh, get like the people with the entrepreneur and creative ideas, if we can send them over to you and figure a way to work together. That would be awesome. 
So, Josh, thank you so damn much for coming on. This has been such a pleasure. So cool to talk to you. And I know how valuable your time is. So thank you for doing this. Appreciate that, man. Thanks for having me. All right, Josh. Take care, man. Later, dude. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining a Reset Real Talk. That was one of the more unconventional ones. But, wow. I mean, Josh, that is what has made Josh what he is. He's been a wildly successful entrepreneur, writer, comedian, in music. The, uh, the list goes on. I mean, do your research on him. He is so, so impressive with what he does and how he does it, but also how he just sticks to his vision and manifests what's going to happen, regardless of who, what noise tells him what's right or wrong or the way he should do it. He does it his way and it's worked out pretty well. And there's something we could all take away uh, from his journey and apply it uh, to ours. So thank you again for joining in another uh, Restart Real Talk. If you don't follow Restart, uh, go to Restart underscore Reset. Give us a follow. We would greatly appreciate it. And we thank you so much for joining in. All the best. Take care, guys.